Hi, I'm George Cow, and today I am with Kim Coleman, and we're going to talk about a, a topic that is um, maybe a little bit difficult but important for so many people, and that's the topic of uh, trauma and how do we deal with um, painful experiences that we have been through or witnessed. And Kim has just a wonderful and gentle way to help people through that. So first of all, before I uh, go any further, I just want to say thank you, Kim, for joining me for this. Hi, thank you, George. I'm really excited to chat with you today. Yeah, thank you. So uh, Kim is a client of mine, and I just thought that she, she has some valuable wisdom to share with you all. So let me first begin with her bio. I'll read her, you know, share with your background, and then we'll get into this topic of how do we, how do we work through painful experiences in a, in a gentle way. All right, so here's Kim's bio. Kim Coleman is an online counselor and coach who specializes in helping people work through trauma and stress in a kind and gentle way. She has over 10 years of experience working in this field and even three years of doing volunteer work for the South African Police Service Trauma Unit. Kim works with people who have been through an event that caused them great stress and helps them to understand what happens to the body in times of stress and trauma, as well as finding and clearing the triggers that are associated with the event. She not only provides counseling for the event, but she also gives coaching to help people move forward with confidence to reach their visions or goals. She walks the path together with them in simple, small, doable steps that allow them to quickly see their success and thereby boost their momentum. So great to have you here, Kim. And um, maybe you can start by, by telling us why is it important? Um, you know, one of the th you know, you, you talk about uh, working through trauma and stress in a, in a kind and gentle way. And, how is that different, I guess, than how people usually work through trauma or how they might imagine working through trauma? Yeah, George, I think that, um, you know, I kind of say, you know, <clears throat> you, a traumatic event, um, you know, generally people, it's something that um, they don't want to talk about or it's painful and we, you know, we kind of think, okay, well, you know, I'm doing okay. We try and be like an ostrich and we stick our head in the sand and we hope it's going to go away or we stick a bandaid on. Um, and um, we don't, we don't want to rehash these painful memories, but if we don't um, try and clear the emotions or um, these triggers are going to come up and, and trip us up. Um, and there are, there are ways to work through them where we don't have to rip that Band-Aid off, we can kind of take it off gently without making it painful. Um, and it is, uh, it is vital to try and clear the emotions um, that are attached so that those triggers don't catch us. Um, because, you know, they could catch us 10 years further along the line. Right, that makes sense. And so... You know, what's like the first step that someone should do when they are wanting to recover from a traumatic event? So the first step I would, uh, I would, I would encourage somebody to do is, um, you know, everybody says once you've had a traumatic event, you need to go and talk to somebody. Um, and if I can just share, that was my, um, how I came about being really passionate about this is, I went through my own really traumatic event um, where I had a home invasion. They came in, they tied me up, they beat me up and they shot my husband. Um, and that in itself, you know, you then go through the trauma of, you know, giving police statements um, and everybody says, okay, now you need to go and speak to somebody about this because you have to get over this and you have to heal. Once you've been through something like that, the last thing you want to go and do is rehash your story to somebody, be traumatized again. Um, so you just rather don't talk to anybody about it. But if you don't clear those and those emotions or those triggers that are going to keep coming up, um, it is going to cause you stress. Um, and if you can't find a way to release the stress or release those emotions, they're going to cause you more stress and health problems along the way so it is so important to clear those um, and 
you know, that's um, made me look for ways to be able to help myself. So that was my whole journey to find ways that people could seek help, which was kind and gentle, that wasn't going to re-traumatize them. Mm. Wow, that is, that, what an amazing experience you went through. Um, what, what happens physiologically to the body when, when someone is going through trauma? Like, is so, that something we need to be aware of? Yes, absolutely. So this was, um, so this is one of the things that I, when I work with my clients is I try to, if, if one can understand what actually happens to the body, it helps you to many times when people have been through a really traumatic experience, they beat themselves up because they say, gee, you know, I should have done this or I could have done this or why didn't I do that? So that plays out quite traumatically and other people judge, you know, or, oh, you know, you should have done this or you should have done that. So if we can understand what our body does in the moment um, and, you know, our body is there to keep us safe. So if we understand the stress process of what actually happens, um, when something is going on, obviously our eyes and our ears are our receptors. They sense something's going on. Um, and the amygdala is a part of our brain that contributes to the emotional processing. It sends a distress signal to the hippocampus part of our brain, and that's the area of our brain that functions like a command center, and that communicates through the rest of our body, through the nervous system. So what that does is it activates all the hormones, and it sends, it releases all these hormones through the body, and the result of that is it pumps um, more blood through the system, gets your heart racing, pumps more oxygen, enables you to breathe, you can hear better, you can see better. So that's the actual physiological process which our body does for us and it allows us, gets us into that, um, you know, we can run faster, we can fight. So it's a whole physiological thing. So that's actually real and it's in split seconds. So we, we're actually not in control of that. So if we understand that process, that's one process, and we never know how we're going to respond in the moment. Um, so that's the first process that we need to understand. And, that's, and if people understand that that's normal, that's nothing that we have control over. Um, the second process to understand is once that's all happened, um, and, and you know, in the situation, there's an emotional um, thing attached to this, which is an emo all the emotions of fear. And so there's many emotions, but there's a whole physiological side of it where the body has had all of these hormones rush through it and it's there to keep us safe, let us run. But once all these hormones have come through our body, the immediate after effect is, you know, we, maybe we can't sleep. We have insomnia. We can physically have diarrhea. We can physically be ill. Um, we can lose weight, we can gain weight. So those are all the physiological sides that we experience. And they are actually real. So if people can understand that as well, they can understand that these are actually real symptoms that they're going through. Um, so putting those two into, into perspective. Mm. Um, the other thing that I wanted to chat about is, you know, when people hear the word trauma, they often say, ah, oh, you know, trauma they often associate the word trauma is, oh, that's only for people that have had really hectic stuff happen to them. Uh, those are for war veterans or those are for people that have been, you know, really badly traumatized. And when we talk of the word trauma, there's, we talk of, um, I don't know if you've ever heard about people talk of big T traumas and small T traumas. So if I can just explain what the two differences are. When we talk of a big T trauma, that's normally when, somebody's life has actually been threatened. So for me, I had a big T trauma. My life was threatened. Um, it would be in a really bad car accident or if uh, there was a um, earthquake or something like that. Um, and yes, people are really traumatized in those. But when you talk of small T traumas, you know, those would be if you were witness to something like that um, or could be something from your childhood. But those are equally traumatic to people. So a lot of people, when they say, okay, well, I've been through a trauma, but it wasn't that bad. It doesn't mean that, you know, it's um, that, that they don't need help. So, you know, 
it's equally um, in need of some attention. That's helpful. What about um, experiences with like relationships or with career? Uh, I guess that would be especially if, if you know one's life wasn't being threatened in danger, but if it was like a like a really uh, serious you know breakup of a relationship, or uh, you were uh, fired from your job or humiliated at work, would that be considered small t trauma or? Yeah, correct. That would be a small t trauma. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, equally, it's for, for that person, it is a trauma. And, um, you know, they would need to address their small t trauma and be given the equal amount of attention and care and kindness as if a person had had a big t trauma. So it is just as valuable. Yeah. And this is this is also applied to um, grief. So losing somebody uh, is that, yeah. Correct. Was... Absolutely. So that's absolutely a small T trauma and mm. um, needs to be dealt in exactly the same way. So I find that some people just, you know, they feel okay. Well, it wasn't wasn't such a big T trauma. So you know, I don't really need any any assistance. But you know, everybody does. You know, for me it's so valuable that people do get the help that they need and can just clear the emotions around that um, and, and understand that it can be done in a gentle way. And what are some of the exercises or tools that you use with clients uh, to clear these emotions and, yeah, and heal? So one of, one of the tools that I found works really well is I use EFT or mm -hmm. tapping. Yes. Um, and this works really well in actually working with the emotions surrounding the trauma to clear the intensity and to bring the, um, yeah, to bring the huge intensity down on the emotions surrounding that. Um, EFT, in short, is it's, it's emotional freedom techniques or tapping. And it's almost like um, acupuncture and, yeah, without using needles. Um, and um, it's basically working on the pressure points um, and they, it would just be tapping with, with, with the fingers. Um, it's a really simple technique that we use. It's totally in, uninvasive. It's used, you know, with the clothes on. Um, it's a tool that we teach, uh, that I teach the clients um, and it's a skill that they use that they can do ongoing for themselves. Um, so that's a very powerful tool to bring the emotions down. Um, and I also, once we've brought the emotions down, we can then try and identify the triggers that is triggering on these events. And once they are, once we've lowered the emotions, we can try and look at the triggers and then work around these. Often we have to work around the triggers. Um, and, um, once you've tried to work around the triggers. Um, and if I can just relate back um, or to my incident. Um, so when I, before I was attacked, I actually went downstairs to make a cup of tea. So my trigger at night was every time I went to make a cup of tea to go downstairs to make a cup of tea, that was immediately my association was going downstairs to make a cup of tea. Um, so to take that trigger away from me, what I did was I took a kettle upstairs. So I was still able to make tea at night, but it wasn't my association of going downstairs to make a cup of tea. So it was a very simple change of that trigger. Um, so it's almost like moving around the trigger so that I wasn't triggered anymore. So it's working around those triggers. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good example. Um, you also have worked with cl clients on these things, obviously. Um, is there any other kind of example that you could share with, with us on how you help the client find or, or kind of clear these triggers? There was another very powerful, um, so as you went back before and you, you say, I've, I volunteered with the South African Police Services um, and I did three years volunteer work um, where 
if there was a crime scene, they would call us on scene. Um, and I used EFT there um, on a lady who had just been robbed and tied up. Um, and it was immediately to try and um, calm her down because she was in a really bad, bad state of shock. So EFT was, can be used um, to immediately calm you in an emotion of extreme um, state of shock. Um, and this, you know, the, the police were trying to question her to get a statement, which was valid because they're there to do a job. But as she was sitting in her chair, she was just literally falling asleep. And that again, if I can relate back to, she's had this incident, the body flooded her with all these hormones. So all these hormones were going around her. And the effect was like, as I said, you know, you have insomnia and you have diarrhea. So they were just making her go to sleep. So she couldn't help her state because that was physically what was happening to her. Uh, so with EFT, what I did was I asked permission if I could hold her hand and touch her, which is essential. And I just started tapping on her points. Um, and she was actually able to sit there and be awake and be present. And she gave the most incredible um, statement to the police that were questioning her. And at the time, I was absolutely gobsmacked. She described the clothes that they wore down to the make of shoes that they had on down to the hats they wore, which I was just amazed because I know when I was questioned by the police, I mean, I, I couldn't even really, when you're in such shock to try and say what color hat they had on, what color shoes. So it's just incredible how something like that can just focus you um, and bring all your attention. Uh, it's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Wow. That's a great, that's a great example. Um, are there any other tools that you use with, with clients to, to help them heal from these things? The other thing I really like to do is once the clients have, um, once we've tried to um, clear their triggers, the one thing I really like to um, bring to mind is that, you know, once they've gone through something like this, um, you know, they've been through a negative incident to try and find a positive. Um, there's always something positive in, in an, even though it was a really bad experience, there's, there is a positive out of it, whether the positive being, you know, you find that you have a great support structure um, or you have a bond or you find something is, is to focus on a positive out of it. Um, and build on that positive. Um, the other thing that was is very empowering as well is that you were a victim of that moment for that second. But do you want to be a victim of that circumstance for the rest of your life? Um, no matter what the circumstance was, you know, if for example it was a house robbery or whatever, they, you know, they had a moment of your time. But do you want to give those people the rest of your life. Um, and, you know, for, for me, that was the most empowering thing is that I'm not going to give them another minute of my time. Um, and that is, I like to empower them with that. Um, some of the exercises um, I like to, is I like to give them some sort of confidence building or gratitude. Um, I get them to do a gratitude journal. Um, and that builds their confidence. Um, I also find that um, they focus a lot on the negative because our, neg our brains are very attuned to grabbing onto the negative. And when we're in that state, we are always going to the negative, what it was so bad. So to try and train their brain into seeing the positive things. Um, so that's one thing I try and get them to do. Um, I make sure that they have a way to express their anger because there's always a lot of anger um, and it's not good to store that anger inside. There's got to be a way to, to get the anger out. So in some form of exercising or journaling to, to channel the anger is really important. Um, I also make sure they have some sort of resource or sort of anchoring image um, that they can hold on to um, in some form of safety or comfort. 
um, in those moments. Um, and and uh, I'm just aware of uh, the, the time, and uh, I want to make sure okay. you have a chance to share um, how might people work with you if they're watching this or listening to this, and they want to they want to reach out to you for some support. And uh, what 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 service do you offer for those who are who are going through these kinds of things? Um, I'd like to encourage people to um, go to my website contact page. Um, and, um, and the website, can... I just want to make sure people know it is colemankim.com. It's C O L M A N K I M.com. So Coleman with a C colemankim.com slash contact. Yeah. And I'll be sure to put the link in the notes of the video. Yes, correct. Um, they can just connect with me there. They can ask me any questions or request a complimentary call and I'd be happy to chat with them. Um, and um, I've got an upcoming offer for November where I'm offering a 40% discount on my one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, and I've, I'm extending this uh, now for the month of October as a bonus for the interview call. Right. Wonderful. So um, if anyone is feeling connected to what Kim is saying and you know that you've got some some trauma, big T or small T trauma to, to work through from your past so that you can have more freedom from it and move forward in a more, uh, more courageous and, and uh, positive way, then I recommend that you give, a, give uh, Kim a contact and, and have a conversation with her and, and see um, how she might be able to help you. So Kim, thank you so much for your work. Is there anything else you wanna share with us as we, as we close? Oh, that's it, thank you so much, George. It's been lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kim. Thank you.